Clark seeks to promote self-love, women empowerment, and inspire others through her artwork. And she does so by using real hair in her pieces. Joining us now with more is artist Tyler Clark. Thank you for coming in this morning. You know, artists are so creative. Tell us about your process and how you arrived at using real hair in your artwork. Yes, um, for me, I really wanted my art to stand out. I wanted to create a name for myself and something that would be very impactful. Um, I love styling hair, I've got a lot of it, and I really <laughs> love to paint, so I never saw someone do this before, and I wanted to blend both together so that I could really make a statement with my artwork. I'm sure people ask you this over and over again, but where do you get the hair? From the beauty supply store. Oh, you do, oh, okay. okay, okay. We yep. heard you use some of your own hair in there, actually. Oh, no. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, well, let's clear that up. All right, but still, it's beautiful. Yeah, it and is the whole concept gorgeous. is just something unheard of. It's like 3D art, yeah. but relatable. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Talk about why it's important for you to be doing this in, in a promotion, in, in a way to promote your own self-care too. Yeah, I think it's important for me to share my story and all the lessons that I'm learning through my artwork because my art actually started off as a very therapeutic experience for me that was very personal and now it's something that I share with the world. So as I'm going through different experiences in life and I'm learning different lessons and I'm healing my heart and just really navigating life, I wanna find a really healthy way to communicate that to others. And so that's what I really try to do through my artwork. So, so. tell us how this journey came about you were telling us in the break that you actually had a corporate job before yes. you actually started doing this. Yes, I went to school for math and mechanical engineering. I went to Spelman and Georgia Tech yeah. and I actually worked at a legacy airline in revenue management. I have a very technical mind, but I also have an extremely creative and artistic mind. So I was painting after work, you know, I have my nine to five, but I was working five to nine yeah. <laughs> on my art and building this business. So it's just been very interesting doing both of those together. And then now, you know, I'm a full-time artist. Yeah. Wow. Why did you make the decision to go full-time an artist? Because that's a, that's a scary move. It was. Yeah. So, you know, since I was in the airline industry, you know, unfortunately with this pandemic, it negatively impacted that industry. Mm -hmm. So people weren't able to travel the same way and, you know, people really were not hopping on a flight. And we really needed to essentially save the company. And so people needed to leave. They were offer, uh, offering voluntary separation packages and I decided to take one because I'm like, look, I wanna be an artist and I just woke up one day and I was like, I have a choice here. I can either chase after the life that I want or I can be complacent with the life that I have. And I decided to take that leap of faith, bet on God and invest in myself. And you know, I realized I had a community of people that were watching me and they needed me. Yeah. And I needed to be available for my life and the people that are watching me. All right, so we have some video um, that you shared with us of you actually going through the creative process of some of your art. Tell us how you conceptualize it and then make it come to fruition. Yes, so I get a lot of my inspiration from social media. Black women are so beautiful. Our hairstyles are always changing. So I always have a reference, a muse, or a concept before I start. Okay. I'm not the abstract kind of thinker creatively. So I like to always have that. And I start with my painting, then I add my hair, and I always try to capture parts of the process and get really creative content to share. We see Chance and Tupac there. And, and Chance <laughs> actually bought a piece, one of your pieces, yeah. So he is one of my collectors. Um, he has one of my art pieces. And uh, yeah, I painted a picture of him and his wife at his wedding and uh, I'm really happy that he owns it. Uh, so do you, when you do this, do you style the hair yourself too or is it pre-styled? Yeah, so, so you, I style the hair, yeah. um, you know, really creating these styles, you know, from and I notice it's not just hair because you do have some scarves in there, mm -hmm. yes. you have the hats in there. Yes. I mean, it's it's just Amazing what you've, <laughs> Thank managed, you. what you've managed to do. And I'm not trying to say like, oh my God, it's amazing, but <laughs> it's just so creative that most people wouldn't think to add that to that the texture. Piece. Yeah, yeah, the texture, it's like Thank 3D. You. Yeah, I think it comes from the engineer in me. Like I wanna yeah. try to find a way to innovate what I'm doing, right? Okay. And I don't, and I think sometimes we put ourselves in these boxes of I have to stay in this lane. But I'm like, no, like I can explore all types of different materials and there's really no limitation. And sometimes it's not necessarily something you see on social media, it might be something you're experiencing in your life that yeah. you may use? Yeah. How many pieces do you do, maybe, would you say, in a month? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what's going on. I actually recently did this really big MasterCard project where I had to paint 23 paintings in six weeks, oh, wow. which is unheard of. Yeah. There are paintings that I've been working on for longer than a year that I just haven't been able to finish. So it really depends on the motivation, the driver, the deadlines. So it is all over the place. Yeah. What do you say to people out there who are like you, who have this artistic hobby, but have really have this technical career? How do you know which side to follow? 
You got to do both. Okay. I think, you know, growing up, we're taught, oh, if, if you're good at STEM, you need to be in STEM. And the way that it is so rigorous, it'll make you neglect your creative side. But I think a lot of people suffer from being unhappy and just sadness because we're losing sight of what really makes us who we are. And there's more to us than just one thing. And so I always encourage people to do both. Whether it's your profession or your passion, mm -hmm. you've got to spend time on what you love. That is so true. So true. And you've managed to marry both amazingly so. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. It's so beautiful. How <laughs> can we get some of your too. art? Yes, you could definitely check my website out. It's inspirebytyler.com. And I'm also inspired by Tyler on social media. Fantastic. All right. Tyler, All right. Thank you so much. Thank it was so nice so to much. meet you. Oh, Thanks so for sharing nice your story. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>